Good afternoon. We're doing a digital Bible study today for our adult Bible study hour uh, in the series of the Minor Prophets. And uh, today we are looking at the prophet Nahum. And so if you want to take your Bibles and turn there to the book of Nahum, uh, we'll go through and do a survey of this minor prophet. Uh, we are going to be visiting a, a city, uh, the book of Nahum is a prophecy regarding a city, and it's the city of Nineveh, uh, who another minor prophet, Jonah, had prophesied to a hundred years earlier. And so we're a hundred years down the road uh, of time uh, at the city of Nineveh, <clears throat> which is the capital of the kingdom of Assyria. And uh, God has a word for the folks in Nineveh, and it is not a good word. Uh, we saw under the preaching of Jonah that the city of Nineveh repented. And now, a hundred years later, under the preaching of Nahum, the city of Nineveh is going to be, is going to receive judgment. And so we find here in the early verses of chapter one that uh, Nahum was a prophet uh, from Judah. And so he was part of that divided kingdom again. We have Judah, we have Israel, and we know that uh, Nahum was from Judah, from the, the, from the southern kingdom, uh, a prophet from Judah. Uh, he preached during 2 Kings chapter 21. And if you have time, uh, turn to 2 Kings and, and read through chapter 21. And what Nahum did was, as we said earlier, he declared the judgment of God upon Nineveh. And he preached about 100, 150 years at the most after uh, the prophet Jonah. And so as we look at the book of Nineveh, or Nahum, we find that it's divided up basically in three chapters. Uh, the judgment of Nineveh is declared in chapter 1. In chapter 2, the judgment of Nineveh is described, and then chapter 3, uh, the judgment upon Nineveh is defended. So uh, let's look at chapter 1, first of all. The judgment of Nineveh declared, and in verses 1 through 7, we see the character of God displayed. Uh, here's what uh, Nahum records. He says, uh, first of all, the oracle concerning Nineveh, the word oracle uh, can also be translated burden. It has the idea of a, a weighted message. Uh, the Hebrew word is masa, uh, kind of a weighty word at that. Uh, and so we have the burden concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, Nahum of Elkosh. And so he begins by saying, the Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord will by no means clear the guilty. His way is in whirlwind and storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea. He makes it dry. He dries up all the waters. Bashan and Carmel wither. Uh, the word Bashan here has the idea of uh, the pasture, uh, Bashan was the area of the pasture lands uh, where they would have uh, where, where they would have grazed sheep and goats. Carmel was the uh, area where there were gardens, there were vineyards, and then the bloom of Lebanon withers. Lebanon uh, is a place where there were fruits, and so we find here that God is going to uh, literally uh, wipe out the pastures, the gardens and vineyards and the fruited areas. The mountains quake before him, the hills melt, the earth heaves before him, and the world and all who dwell in it. Uh, we're told by, by Bible commentators that the area around Nidimah, there is a 125 mile mountain range. And uh, Nahum has this in view where the mountains are going to quake and the hills are going to melt. Uh, and I think that's figurative uh, because the topography hasn't changed, but it's figurative regarding 
uh, the mountains of the uh, power of Assyria uh, are going to be no more. Uh, verse number six, who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken into pieces by him. Now, we find here that uh, Nahum shares uh, the character of the Lord in his holiness, in his vengeance towards their, their wickedness and their disobedience since the times of, of Jonah. But look at verse number seven. The Lord is good. In the midst of all of this, the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. For he knows those who take refuge in him. That's even a good verse for our situation uh, that we're living in today. The Lord is good. And when trouble comes, we can go to him. And it's like going into a fortress. He knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end of the adversaries and will pursue and will pursue his enemies into darkness. And once again, the judgment language begins where the Lord's judgment is like an overflowing flood. One of the things that's interesting about uh, um, uh, Nineveh is that, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show that later. Uh, let's go to verse number nine. Uh, what do you plot against the Lord? He will make a complete end. Trouble will not rise up a second time. For they are like entangled thorns, like drunkards as they drink. They are consumed like stubble, fully drier, dried. From you came one who plotted evil against the Lord, a worthless counselor. And uh, whether that was the king of Assyria who plotted against God's people, uh, thus says the Lord, though they are, they are at full strength in many, they will be cut down and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. And now I will break his yoke from off you and will burst your bonds apart. And goes on and says down in verse 20, 15, uh, Behold upon the mountains the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace. Keep your feasts, O Judah. Fulfill your vows. For never again shall the worthless pass through you. He is utterly cut off. It's interesting in these words of judgment that God gives um, encouragement to the people in Judah. And uh, that, uh, that he's going to uh, bless them. He's going to, he, he wants to encourage them. And uh, that they are encouraged to fulfill their responsibilities. So we have the... Um, the uh, judgment of God or judgment of Nineveh declared there in chapter one. Chapter two, we see the judgment of Nineveh, Nineveh described. Here we find in verse number one, the scatterer has come up against you. Who is that scatterer? Well, uh, it's Babylon. Uh, Babylon is going to be the next world um, uh, dominating power, and God's going to use the kingdom of Babylon. Uh, to afflict Nineveh and the Assyrians. Man the ramparts, watch the road, dress for battle, collect for all your strength. The Lord is restoring the majesty of Jacob as the majesty of Israel, the entirety of uh, the 12 tribes. For plunderers have plundered them and ruined their branches. And so the Lord is going to reach out now in judgment the shield of his mighty men is red. And now uh, the Lord, or Nahum's describing uh, the army of the Babylonians. His soldiers are clothed in scarlet. The chariots come with flashing metal on the day he musters them. The cypress spears are brandished. The chariots race madly through the streets. They rush to and, and fro through the squares. They gleam like torches. They dart like lightning. He remembers his officers. They stumble as they go. They hasten to the wall. The siege tower is set up. The river gates are open. The palace melts away. Its mistress is stripped. She is carried off. Her slave girls lamenting, moaning like doves and beating their breasts. Nineveh is like a pool whose waters run away. Halt, halt, they cry, but none turns back. Plunder the silver, plunder the gold. There is no end of the treasure or the wealth of all precious things. And so we find here 
um, just the, the, the siege of the city uh, where Babylon comes into Nineveh and it's quite descriptive as to the, the battle that takes place and the Assyrians being defeated. Uh, we find in verses 9 through 13, we find the description of the spoil of the city. He says once again, plunder the silver, plunder the gold. There is no end of the treasure or the wealth of all precious things. Desolation, desolation and ruin. Hearts melt, knees tremble. Anguish is in all loins. All faces grow pale. And here you've got the, the people of Nineveh, the wicked people of Nineveh, Nineveh are not prepared uh, for this assault. This is, here's something that's interesting. Uh, Nahum gives us an illustration. Where is the lion's den? The feeding place of the young lions. Where the lion and the lioness went. Where the cubs were with none to disturb. The lion tore enough for his cubs and strangled prey for his lionesses. He fills the caves with prey and his dens with torn flesh. Here we've got a description of what Assyria was like. It was lion-like in its previous history. Nineveh was lion-like in its previous history. Um, Nineveh, again, being the capital of the, of, of the Assyrian Empire. And the Lord says, Behold, I'm against you, declares the Lord of hosts. I will burn your chariots in smoke, and the sword shall devour your young lions. I will cut off your prey from the earth, and the voice of your messengers shall no longer be heard. And so we have God in his plan to come in and, and attack and destroy uh, the city of Nineveh uh, with the Babylonian army. In the third chapter, we see that uh, Nahum basically has a defense for the work of the Lord here, the judgment of God. Woe to the bloody city, all full of lies and plunder, no end to the prey. He goes on and describes the, the noise of the attack and the crack of the whip, the rumble of the wheel, the galloping horse, the bounding chariot, horsemen charging, flashing sword, swords and glittering spear, hosts of slain, heaps of horses, Dead bodies without end, they stumble over the bodies, all for the countless whorings of the prostitute, graceful and of deadly charms, who betrays nations with her whorings and peoples with her charms. Again, the, the idolatrous and, and evil uh, lifestyle of the people of Nineveh and of Assyria. So the Lord says, Behold, I come against you, declares the Lord of hosts, and will lift up your skirts over your face. I will make nations look at your nakedness and kingdoms at your shame. I will throw filth at you and treat you with contempt and make you a spectacle. All, you, all who look at you will shrink from you and say, Wasted is Nineveh. Who will grieve at her? Where will I seek comforters for you? And then there's an illustration given. Are you better than Thebes? Thebes being that great city in Egypt that was located on the Nile River. And we find in Isaiah chapter 20 that there's a, there's a judgment that's actually pronounced against this great city, Thebes. With water around her, her rampart a sea, and water her wall. Here we find out that uh, Thebes was located on the Nile River and that protected one part of the city, and on the other part of the city, the other side of the city, a little ways for, out from the city, was actually the Red Sea. And so we find here, just tucked in this little book, a, a, a judgment, a, a reminder of the judgment placed upon thieves, a great city in Egypt that uh, God also judged. Cush, or Ethiopia, was her strength, Egypt too, and that without limits. Put, or Africa, and the Libyans, were her helpers. Yet she became an exile. She went into captivity and goes on and uh, Nahum once again describes the judgment that took place there uh, on Thebes. Well, as we close out this book then, we realize that all of their uh, strongholds were destroyed in verse number 12. Verses 13 through 15 all strength was diminished. 
Uh, verse number 13, behold, your troops are like women in your midst. The gates of your land are wide open to your enemies. Fire has devoured your bars. There's absolutely no resistance here. Uh, all of their social strength had been taken away in verses uh, 16 through 18. You increased your merchants more than the stars of heaven. The locust spread its wings and flies away. Your, grass, your princes are like grasshoppers, your scribes like clouds of locusts settling on the fences in the day of cold. And so we find here that uh, uh, there's just total uh, total, their total social strength and, and economy was taken away. Lastly, we've got God's complete judgment promised in verse 19. There is no easing your hurt. Your wound is grievous. All who hear the news about you clap their hands over you. For upon whom has not come your unceasing evil? And so Nineveh had become a, a wicked city. And uh, we find here that under the power of the Assyrian power, the Assyrian kingdom, uh, Nineveh was the source of, of, of evil. And God's judgment finally falls. And so we find here that God is righteous in his works. God is sovereign. He punishes whom he will. And they are powerless to stop him. So read through the book of Nahum. Um, there was a... Um, sermon written by a Puritan preacher entitled Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And this surely is the sub-theme of Nahum. Thank you. Have a great day.